Hey guys, Tammy here. And in this video, I'm going to talk about using humor in your child custody case. Now, some of you need to lighten up. Okay. I, I know this is serious business. I'm not saying it's not. Um, it definitely is. But you know what they say? If you don't laugh, you'll cry. I want to talk about this a little bit and why it can be good for you and your kids and why it doesn't have to be seen as this horrible, awful thing that we're actually you know, finding humor in the absurdity of all of this stuff. Before we dive in, as always, let me just remind you, if you like this video, don't forget to hit like and also subscribe to the channel so that you get notified as new videos are released. And only 30% of you watching are actually subscribed. 70% of you are not. So please go subscribe. I need you to show me love. I show you love by creating content. I need the love in return by you subscribing to my channel. I'm going to tell you something. Thomas and I, okay, so let, let me just start with this. Okay. My, I was, my husband Thomas passed away about 18 months ago unexpectedly. Okay. If you're, if you've been a watcher of the channel for a while, listen to the podcast, you know that. Um, he was a family law attorney. That's how I got my cred, if you want to call it that, my my experience, my wisdom, my learning came through working in his practice for over 15 years. Okay. Thomas was a very, very funny man. Okay. He just loved life, was very joyful. And I always say that, you know, a lot of ways my life has now become kind of a deflated balloon without him. Well, Thomas and I did a video many moons ago. It's actually one of the most popular video videos on our channel. And it's what's called something like the complete child custody guide, something like that. And in this video, I think Thomas was feeling exceptionally punchy that day. And he just kept making jokes and making cracks as I was trying to get through a serious subject. And, um, and, and, you know, and, and of course I laugh at him and I, chime in and I make my own little jokes sometimes and all that if you've watched our dynamic. And a lot of people have, um, you know, found that offensive um, and say, you know, you shouldn't be laughing over such a serious issue. And, you know, here's what I will tell you about that. Okay. I am 53 years old and I have been through my share of tragedy in life and not not as much as some, you know, I have not had a major health issue. I have not lost a child. I have many things that I am grateful that I have not had to endure. Um, I have endured the loss of my mother suddenly, um, about 10 years ago, um, at, a, she was in her, she was like 61, um, 62, something like that. So she was very young. Um, and I'm an only child and we were very, very close. Um, I went through my divorce from a narcissistic ex. I went through, um, you know, my children and co-parenting and then meeting Thomas and trying to have a blended family and co-parenting with his ex, who was not uh, always easy either. Um, and then uh, Thomas passing away very suddenly in an accident about a year and a half ago. So, you know, I say all that not for you to... Um, feel sorry for me. I mean, we all have our things we've been through, right? I'm sure you have a whole list you could give me of all the things that you've endured in your life. And I always like to say, everybody's got their cross to bear, right? And it's different. But when you hit a point in life where you're no longer able to find the humor um, in a situation, um, you are honestly doing yourself a disservice. Do you know that when, you know, when you laugh, it's one of the ways that you can trigger endorphins, that you can trigger good feelings in your body. You know what else does that? Exercise. You know what else does that? Sugar. <laughs> you know, there, there's all kinds of things that do that, but laughter is one of them. And it's one of the easiest things we could do. It's one of the reasons that we like the cat videos on Facebook or whatever. I think sometimes when we go through difficult things, it's like people are very serious and they expect us not to laugh or not to find anything funny. And honestly, you stop living if you do that. You you can't possibly 
go through life and not have any humor or joy or laughter. Um, you know, I am in a, a grief group on, on Facebook. On, I'll, just, I'll just say, I was going to say on a social media channel, but on my Facebook um, profile and, and I'm in a grief group. And we honestly share some really dark humor in there sometimes. And we talk about that, about how, you know, somebody that, ha you know, it's death humor, which some people might say is, you know, maybe disrespectful in their opinion or whatever. But honestly, for most of us, we've got to find that humor or we're, we're, we're not going to be able to get up and put one foot in front of the other every day. You know, I, I tell this story about, um, I'm not really a morning person and my husband was, and he would come into our room in the mornings after he had been downstairs and had his coffee and done his devotionals and was all like prepped up and ready for the day. Right. And he would come in and he'd be kind of humming, let a little hum whistle under his breath. Like, you know, like this little thing he would do. And I hated it. I especially hate auditory things in the morning. <laughs> and I would say, will you please shut up? And his response always, immediate response would be, yeah, someday you'll miss me when I'm dead and gone. And I would respond to him and say, yeah, but today's not that day, so shut up. <laughs> you know, because I'm kind of a grump in the morning. And that's funny now. I mean, it's sad because I didn't have any idea, obviously, that anything was going to happen to him and neither did he. And, you know, it was just kind of our way of coping. Instead of having an argument, you know, he would crack some joke. And that's how we dealt with that difficulty of being kind of on opposite ends of our morning routine. I just want to encourage you to you know, not to put aside the seriousness of what you're going through or what you're dealing with, but to be able to find moments of joy and laughter and all that kind of thing. Because look, when you're dealing with a narcissistic person, what is one of their main goals? To steal your joy. That is one of their main goals. If they can keep you upset, if they can keep you angry, and they can keep you um, stressed and anxious and all of those negative emotions, guess what? You're easier to manipulate. A, a negative person is much easier to manipulate than somebody who is happy and positive and um, finding joy every day. Now, again, I'm not saying that your situation isn't serious. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take the court process seriously. Sure, certainly you should. You better, your judge expects you to. But that doesn't mean that you can't ever laugh about how absurd everything is. You know, one of the other jokes that Thomas and I always had between us is something would go wrong in our house and he would say, oh, that's that's your ex-husband's fault. And he would name him by name. And he would say, that's your ex-husband's fault. And it would be something random like, you know, the, the new refrigerator we bought a year ago, like the light bulb's not working. You know, obviously has nothing to do with my ex-husband and that fridge was bought a year ago, so it didn't even ever belong to him and it has nothing to do with him. But it was just sort of uh, of our way of dealing with the fact that my ex-husband has caused a lot of grief in our life. And so that kind of became the joke of like, yeah, anything that goes wrong, pretty much his fault, whether it had anything to do with him or not. Again, just kind of a little inside joke. It doesn't mean that I didn't take responsibility for my part or that I didn't see the seriousness in our situation or dealing with my custody or any of those kinds of things. It's just a way for you to be able to cope and honestly be more successful in your case. If you can find the humor in the irony of the situations, you're going to be a much more positive person. You're going to be harder to manipulate. You're going to be happier around your children. You're going to be a better parent. You're going to be all kinds of positive things that you wouldn't be without that humor. So don't be afraid to use it. Okay. This is my permission for you to use it. And I know we're going to get all kinds of probably negative comments on this video. So if you agree with me, 
and you find the humor helpful and you find the lightheartedness helpful and it's helped you survive the the mental brutality that has been your child custody case, please go down and comment below and let me know so that I know that I'm not alone in this, okay? If you guys would like to learn more about child custody strategies and how to cope with your narcissistic ex, you can go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. There's a link on that page where you can book a time to speak to a member of my staff, learn more about my services and how I might be able to support you on this journey. See you guys next time.